welcome to binary jazz it's a podcast about something uh we're here most weeks and uh it's three people talking about things that's all <laughs> gary over there binary gary on the internet allison uh down there is allison plus on the internet and i am chris jazz sequence on the internet and this is the third week of 2023 is that right and we are just raring to go mm. we are here for it 2023 come at us 2023 <laughs> just looking if got it is available got it.com of course not but <laughs> We can get got it dot today for twenty dollars a year. <laughs> or got it dot fun. It's twenty dollars a year. <laughs> is that is that got hyphen it? No, unfortunately not. I'm relying as I as I look at it, that's a bad way to go. Yeah. Let's go go. No. Not not no no, not no. that one. Not that one. <laughs> got dash it. <laughs> Also not available. Um, uh, some reason the registrar suggested got me dot us for twelve dollars a year. Oh nope, that wasn't the one. Yep, got dash it dot computer is available. Uh, got hyphen it gives me a four oh four. Well, somebody owns it. It's registered. That's it's, all. It's on WP Engine though. <laughs> well, that's that explains a lot. <laughs> Let's see if I do got it dot com slash WP admin requests per hour. So it'll come back up at the top of the hour. Fifty six <laughs> right. minutes from now it'll resolve for about four minutes and go down again. How about let's see. How many uh, domains do you own? Me personally, I have trimmed down. Um I'll go get an accurate count though while we talk. Yeah. What's yeah, I'm curious what trim down means. <clears throat> like twenty, ten? Five? Uh, maybe probably less than twenty. <coughs> uh -huh. Yeah, let's let's look at let's look at the old name cheap. Uh, I think I have like six or seven, maybe. I don't. I never had a ton. I wasn't the one that oh, was man. just like a domain collector. I had um, a hundred at one point. Uh, let's see. By. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine. I have ten. I have no. I have eleven. I have eleven. I've got binaryjazz dot us, uh, and also binaryjazz dot com should be in here. Um, so I guess that's two. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so ten. Yeah, binaryjazz dot com, binaryjazz dot us, uh, Chris Reynolds dot io. Gavin Reynolds dot me, Lila Reynolds dot com, mm -hmm. uh, jazz sequence dot com, possible octopus dot com, s three q dot us, which is my URL shortener. Oh. Uh, Whisperwitch dot com, which is Aaron's email, and uh, yes is a world dot us, which is our blog for the kids stuff. Mm. Yeah, I've got my address. I've got binary <clears throat> Gary and Gary Kovar dot com. I've got the three kids. Um, I have another friend, Evan. I handle his domain registration because otherwise it wouldn't happen. Uh, ground control bot dot space uh, and haiku fish. I used to and own two abandoned projects that I will click uh, let expire. <laughs> so thank you for asking. <laughs> I used to own jazz like sequence with a three in it so that because the idea was like well if people find me online and they see that i'm jazz frequence and mm -hmm. they go to mm -hmm. jazz frequence.com and that doesn't exist then uh then yeah then, then I, they would be so uh, trying to make myself but then i decided i don't care uh yeah. and nobody does that there's only one person that i knew who did that and then she figured it out but then when she did it, I was like, oh, I should probably do that. That seems like it makes sense. And then I owned it for a couple of years. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I <laughs> do like, like I that one of, the, one of the suggestions for got it is um, gotspanish.us or gotmeaning.us. 
Got meetings. Got meetings. Nope. Sure don't. Let's see. New chat. Got clothing. Uh, I um. We are... I think I have eight, but I'm not gonna log in to see because I just <laughs> have the the oomph. <clears throat> yeah, that's fair. That's a, this is amazing that my um I no longer paginate my domains. There was a long time where it was like I have to go to page six. That feels like a big step. <laughs> I it was um probably two years ago, um, and I um um clean slated it. Yes. I um <laughs> I was playing the long game. And I bought, I have the domains for both my niece and nephew. Mm -hmm. My niece is now six and my brother still hasn't noticed. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, I've just sunk so much silly money into this joke. Yeah. Well, I, um, I got, I got domains for the kids a long time ago when they basically, when they started doing things on the internet, I, I just got them just so I would have them. Um, and my son was like, cause, and, and at the time, like I also g gave them email addresses that were just their name at jazzsequence.com. Yeah. We could just add them to, to mine. And like this year, um, my son Gavin is like, can I have a different email address? Can it be something other than whatever? And I'm like, okay, well, do you want to use this, this Gavin Reynolds dot me that I've had sitting you know, in my back pocket for a while. And he's like, sure. So, um, so I set that up like a couple months ago, maybe a month ago. Um, so he's using that now. So he's no longer, uh, I think no longer under, using... under the umbrella. <clears throat> yeah. I think it was Katie's. I registered while still at the hospital when she was born. That's kind of I don't, horrible. I don't know why, you know, like there's that part where you haven't slept for like, you know, <laughs> a day like... and a half and your brain's like pudding. You're like, Oh, what else do I need to do? I haven't registered doma her domain name yet. Like, <laughs> in the world. I just figured, I for my niece and nephew, I just was like, oh, this will be funny because at some point my brother will look for it and it'll be taken mm. and that'll just be really hilarious. <laughs> Just, I it'll still be think a you fun joke it. and if he never no, finds out, only only you will get <laughs> if he never finds out though when they turn 18 and they're or whenever at some point you know there you and can the be funny like thing hey. is is that their their names aren't like the combination with my last name and the like it doesn't like who wants those who wants those domains well i i found Even it better. interesting i found it interesting that gavin reynolds.com was unavailable um, so I had to do the dot us, um, but Lila Reynolds.com I could get. Um, <clears throat> and the same thing was true. Cause I also, um, you know, my dad, uh, years ago when he was transitioning between jobs, um, asked me to put up a website for him. And I think it was the same thing for him too. And we did Gene Reynolds dot me. Um, as like just like a portfolio sort of resume kind of site. Um, and I owned that for like a year or two or three. Um, and then we just let that expire too. But that was also a similar thing where Gene Reynolds was um, was taken. Yeah. That one's actually a little bit more understandable because I think there are some actually fairly reputable Gene Reynoldses in the world. <laughs> they're out there. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely out there. Um, I was pretty happy to get my domain name because my dad and I share the same name. Mm. And uh, I beat him to it. So. <laughs> I'm sure he was looking. He might have been at some point. Um, and then he's like, who's this? Oh. <laughs> well, I, I now it resolves to just like a bad WP install I was using to test stuff with. But um, at some point, like it didn't resolve to anything. I just owned it. And it was like, a, you know, like like the web host, like uh, this, this account has not been set up yet type deal, you know, for a long time. Because I used to use DreamHost for all my registration needs because I have a lot of, um, not a lot, but a fair bit of affiliate like mm -hmm. stuff that comes in monthly. Well, I may as well stick my domains there and get a discount on them. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to use uh, DreamHost for my domain stuff too. Um, and then I started using a couple different, like then I was using different things because I was, because um, I was using Gandhi uh, that was, because it was the only one at the time or, or the cheapest one at the time that did dot IOs. So when I got Chris Reynolds .io, I got that over there. And then I got a couple other things over there. Um, and so then I had stuff that was like, 
some stuff is over here. Uh, and then I, I was also using, um, uh, oh my God, uh, like domains.com. So I had some mm. things that were through DreamHost and some things were on domains.com and some things were on Gandhi. <laughs> And all of them are routing through um, Cloudflare, which is the only thing that like was like the definitive like this is all the stuff that I own. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided that that sucked, uh, and so I moved everything over to um, to Namecheap. Did you? And that is the story with... of domains that nobody listening really cares. Did you ever have to use network solutions? <clears throat> yes. In the early days of the internet, it was like if you wanted a domain name, they were the only game in town, and it was a hundred dollars a year. Yeah, I don't are. think I don't think I use them when they are the only game in town, but I did use them as a freelancer because other people used them. And I all like it's fun as a freelancer uh to make decisions about things you will never do based on things that your clients are doing that are dumb. Mm -hmm. Like I will never use GoDaddy because GoDaddy sucks because, and I know this because I've used it for clients and I will never use like HostGator because I know that it sucks uh, because I've had clients, but you know, like that, but that HostGator sort of had like the whole, like you could get like a, an actual box and you still can there. That's yeah. cool. Like somewhere in It's true, somebody's... but like, I hate cPanel. I mean, and. Oh, I just give me, just give me a, just give me the terminal. That's it. That's all I need. Give me SSH yeah. access. I don't like take off everything else. That's all I yes. want. Yes. Well, back in the back in the olden days, I wouldn't have um, been able to use it back in the olden days either. Yeah. I would have gotten Apache set up to handle one site. Adding the second one, I would have broken the first one. I never recovered. <laughs> it would have been a disaster. Uh, so uh, since we are we kind of came into this without topics, I've uh, so okay. I'll rewind a bit. I recently had a conversation about uh, uh, chat GPT in which uh, the person I was talking about it with said that she has uh, gotten into like debates with the AI mm. about stupid like, you know, pop culture things like, you know, whether or not so and so character on uh, Sailor Moon was like a selfish character or whatever, um, you know, uh, so uh I decided to, since we didn't have a topic, to just go into uh, Chat B GPT and uh, see if it has ideas for us. <laughs> okay, okay, before we jump into Chat GPT, I, I have like a, a, a micro topic. Micro topic. It became a conversation at work today. <clears throat> okay. Um, and I thought that I would ask you all about it. Let's jump we, into it. Let's dive in. Right our in. new segment, Gary's Micro Topic. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I was going to call it Gary's Corner, but all right. That's way better. Sure, Gary's oh, Corner. Oh, and I'm supposed to have investment advice today, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the other. <laughs> okay, that's the well, other... That's, that, that I'm all about. Give the people um, what they want. That, that is the, yeah. yeah, that is the other <laughs> uh, segment so... of, of the podcast. Yeah, there's like 0% chance anybody will make investment decisions based on what I have to say, and that's a good thing. Um, that should be the, that should we should actually record that and I well we are recording it we should actually take that and be it should be like the intro bumper can, for Gary's investment advice the, the um can we um can we re, can I do it like on a really nice my nice microphone sure I know you don't believe that I have one because I always show I know up you with have like one my yeah no janky, I know you do like, 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 can you so hear all that noise right now topic? no can, you yes well, let's go let's go let's go to your micro topic okay my micro topic is um dress codes. So the, here's here's the reason why. Next week, I'm going to a company on site. Um, and the conversation was around, oh, um, please don't wear just jeans and a t-shirt. And I'm like, all right, like, I, this is literally all I own. <laughs> well, I, okay, I'm I'll not, wear shorts and a button up. <laughs> I'll wear flip flops. <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, so that's sort of it. Like, what what does that come down to? What do you what do you like? Well, jeans are the option for me. Well, they're what they're that's, saying is business casual is what they're saying. Does that preclude jeans? Like, if yes. I wear jeans with like a button up shirt, is that? Oh. In... It sounds like if they said no jeans and t shirts, and I feel like that's if what they, they said no jeans and t shirt, I would I would expressly avoid jeans. Yeah. <laughs> And it sounds like the jeans are part of the problem, just like t-shirts are. Yeah, I I think I'm gonna have to challenge that, and we'll have to 
we'll have to dive back into this next week uh, to let you know how it went because I'm not going out and buying pants before. No, I like I don't something. think I, I don't agree Ooh. with this. I'm just saying if they said if that's what they said, then yeah, yeah, it sounds I, like what they're really meaning is business casual, which means like yes. non denim and like a collar shirt. Yeah, except it even sounds like I would actually interpret business casual as including jeans but not t shirts. Oh, um, interesting. So. so I would I would actually interpret this as like the fact that they didn't say business casual or didn't define yeah. what the attire expectations were that it would go one step past business casual into like maybe not like you know wear a suit and tie but definitely yeah, like you know definitely like khakis or mm-hmm. you know dickies or something that aren't jeans um and but where does uh, this leave where does this leave female identified people like <clears throat> does that mean a dress does that mean like a skirt a dress yeah. uh slacks uh mm-hmm. yeah I don't not like not that. leggings is, is what it means yeah yeah not okay. comfort is what yeah. i'm hearing yeah exactly well i mean it's not comfortable for 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 men either to wear i mean <laughs> my jeans are stretchy dude i have i have gone i have i have yeah. gone I want a whole hog thing. and gotten the gap stretch jeans because they are comfortable as shit <laughs> and i will only get those and so yeah if i wear anything else it is definitely not the comfort wear <laughs> yeah. yeah yep yep so there it's possible that um next week I'll you have lose a great your story job about next the... week <laughs> no no i doubt that but maybe i'll have a great story about the time i got thrown out of a nasa hq <laughs> <laughs> No, you need to go and purchase a pair of pants now, they will say. Yeah. <laughs> you I mean, if that's cannot the case, re-enter I'll... the facility until you have a pair of slacks. <laughs> they probably... I just don't think anybody's going to say anything. Someone may be like privately offended, and I could not care less. That's it. Or they're just like, there's no denim, it's a safety thing. <laughs> that's doubtful. In an office building, though? <laughs> that's doubtful. <laughs> Yeah, you'll just make everybody else there jealous if you show up in jeans. Maybe I'll make them uncomfortable. You know, <laughs> this man and his radical, relaxed ideas. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they're not ripped jeans. <laughs> uh, and no, and what's, home. what's your investment home. advice for the week, Gary? Oh, is it? Are we to that topic now? Sure, let's do it. Sure. I mean, we could okay. do it at the end, but let's do it now. Um. Okay. My investment advice for the week is um, uh, not a particular stock, but understand the different options between a Roth and a traditional investment asset. You pay your taxes now or you pay them later. If you can afford to pay them now, do it so that as your money appreciates when you retire, you get more of it tax-free. When in doubt, go Roth. Gary's investment advice. Yep. This is relevant to U.S. based people. As a yeah, society. that's that, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, especially given that you know, at our age, there will be no, you know, social security or anything, and we will be paying thirty percent sales tax. And yep, you no, know. sounds legit. Well, in my retirement, I plan on moving somewhere that has <laughs> universal health care, safety net. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Someone was just like, oh, have you made many friends? And I was like, no, but I was like, but I'm talking all my friends into moving where I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I haven't made many, but I'm recruiting them here. Yeah, I'm just I'm actively recruiting. <laughs> just just slowly helping the, the migration. It's a slow burn, but it'll yeah. work out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had for a long time, I was like, well, you know, I mean, we're going to be in the U.S. for or in North Carolina for a while. Now we're not. But now I can't leave at my current state of employment which you cannot duh. leave because of your current because it's it's not yeah, based in north be, carolina i have to be based in the u.s though you have to be based in the u.s okay so you oh, can't move okay. to canada but you could move anywhere in the in the u.s so you yeah. could go to what, you could what's you could canada move to of the u.s though hmm? what's canada of the u.s maybe california uh, depends on what part yeah i was gonna yeah. say you could you could move up to like you know washington and be as close to Canada as possible without actually crossing the border. <clears throat> You're gonna have great footage when this floor just caves in. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go check on anything. <laughs> Nobody's yelling out or anything, so I'm, I'm just. Every once in a while, every once in a while, there is sort of like a 
a very faint kind of like growling noise in the background, but that's about all that we're picking up with the yeah. noise cancellation. That's amazing because like literally it sounded like someone was just like like beating on my chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not hearing that. Nope. No, not, not at all. I wouldn't honestly. I wouldn't have known if you hadn't told us in advance. I would. I would just yeah. be like, it's background noise. Yeah, there's this. I I wish this microphone was picking up equivalently. Like, boy, it's, <laughs> it's just. You just need a. You need now a, I'm like actively. Listening. You need a contact mic. Is what you need to like a attach a contact mic to the uh to your your live feed. Um. Okay. So here are some ideas that. So I asked uh ChatGPT. Uh, we are binary jazz, and we have a podcast about whatever seems interesting at the moment. What should we talk about on our podcast today? There are many interesting topics you could discuss in your podcast today. Some possibilities include the latest advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning. I think, I think chat GPT is being a little too self-aware, a little too on the nose with that particular prompt. That's, it's also a little egotistical. <laughs> right? Right? Like it's a little bit like, yeah, you could talk about me because I'm fucking awesome. Talk about all of this. <laughs> like this right here. <laughs> this is what you're talking about on your I'm the podcast. <laughs> oh, hang on. Well, I don't really want to talk about Chachi. right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, in in the way that it's insinuating, right? That we discuss yeah. it. Um, the second prompt is the impact of technology on society and how it's shaping the future, which also seems pretty close to the first thing. Yeah. Uh, the current state of politics and how it may affect the economy. That is definitely not something we're going to talk about any more than we already do. No. Uh, the effects of climate change and what individuals and governments can do to combat it. Uh, that feels a little bit too heavy for this particular podcast. I mean, and we go places, but I just don't feel like we need to go there right now. Right, right. Uh, the role of social media and how it's influencing communication and relationships. I actually do have uh a tangential uh topic related to that that is also related to dungeons and dragons uh, of course <laughs> so uh I, I, um it's all coming together <laughs> it, always right um okay so so we talked about the ogl uh and wizards of the coast releasing a new one so they've recently like pulled back and announced and they they made an apology it was a bad thing we did a bad thing it was bad it, it wasn't good we didn't ask for you, you all like expressed your opinions etc 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 uh we're gonna do a new one and you're gonna be involved blah 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 blah, blah. everybody's like great you know fight me i guess you know like show show me the money um and uh they released this week uh a revised so there's there's two parts to this whole conversation. There's the OGL, which is the license that controls the content that they are that is going to be available for publishers to use. And then there's the SRD, which is the standards rules document. Yeah. Uh, standards reference document, standard rules document, something like that, uh, which is like the actual content that you can take and use and manipulate and put into your stuff. And the the biggest argument uh, by third party publishers is that because of the way the ecosystem in Dungeons and Dragons works, like we take pretty much verbatim, like the style and tone uh, for when we are when we are creating our custom spells and custom monsters and all that sort of stuff, uh, we are using the same tone and language that the official books use because it makes it easier to process it makes it easier to understand it's it's like it feels like oh this is written in a way that that i understand because it's similar to what i already know about dungeons and dragons so yeah. so the risk uh the risk is uh and the concern is that if you make if you you take all that stuff out and you say like you can't use the stuff in the books anymore in your third party content then it means that like all of the stuff that's been written and the way that we write about things would have to be in a completely different way that is unique and doesn't have that. It's like, it's like taking open source software and then saying, okay, you can't use WordPress anymore, but you can continue to use WordPress plugins, like taking the guts out of the thing, but like you can't use the thing itself. Um, 
and that's why people are upset. So uh, the new revised thing they released this week is based on Creative Commons license, uh, but we don't know what's in the SRD. We only know that it's a Creative Commons license. Um, and uh, this was posted uh, onto D and D Beyond, which is which was purchased acquired by uh, Wizards of the Coast last year, uh, and is now, I guess, their official means of communication to the community. However, both the apology and the and the announcement and link to the the updated. OGL stuff uh, were posted in such a way that comments were disabled. Mm. So uh, it's not particularly uh, inclusive of people commenting, right? Because you disabled comments and you put it on a particular site that's not on the Dungeons and Dragons site, it's on this other thing that's just a property that you own. Uh, so you have to know that it's there to even find it. And then when you do find it, you can't really say anything. There's gonna be like a form that you can fill out and submit opinions and whatever. Uh, and then they also had a, uh, a thread on Twitter where they were answering some of the questions that were coming up in the community. So again, distribution channels for talking about this very important thing that shapes the future of Dungeons & Dragons is only available through a specific website that is a subscription-based website and uh, does not allow comments so you have to know you have to know that it's there to look for it and then uh, you can't say anything there even if you did and and or uh, Twitter which again self-contained social media site uh, that uh, I mean, like only like you'd have to be following the right people or you'd have to be following the D&D &D Beyond account or whatever to even know that that it was a thing. Uh, so that is that's my uh, thing about <laughs> social media and how it's influ influencing communication and relationships is like this is not good because you are locking your your conversation into a black box where only some people can access. Yeah, and it's not I mean, it's just too exclusive of a of a it's not including all the people who aren't i mean there's so many people who play D D that aren't yeah not, i don't want to say not tech savvy but that aren't locked into twitter or lo not locked in so. i mean there's a lot of people that that bailed on twitter a couple months ago and are now yeah. only on mastodon and they're not going to be part of that conversation because there's no official D D beyond mastodon account and they're not having the yeah. conversation over there um and and locking it into a specific like website with no like community forum i mean like there are freaking channel like there are platforms where that are made for conversation and social media and your website that is a property a sub property of, of the thing that you're talking about is not that thing and have like proper community moderation right like, yeah right yeah i mean like if you had a if you had a forum you could moderate the comments just as easily as you can just turn off you know like i, I assume that yeah, I assume that the reason why they turned off comments on, on those posts is because they didn't want to get like all of the, you know, flaming, whatever, flaming poo from the community. And that's fine. Um, they getting the flaming poo on Twitter uh, because that's mm -hmm. what Twitter is good at. Um, but like there's ways of moderating that stuff if you have, you know, your own discussion board somewhere. So uh, that is my uh, that's my soapbox on the role of social media and how it influences in the communication and influence communication and relationships <laughs> <clears throat> but it also doesn't encourage i don't know it doesn't encourage furthering of relationships either yeah like, it, it just feels like not good <laughs> not the best <laughs> feels bad it feels like you made the wrong decision and you're continuing to make the wrong decision yeah <laughs> yeah and then you're just doubling down on the bad decisions that you've already made <laughs> Well, because yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't shout out from the rooftops. We're here for the community, right? <laughs> Which is yep. what the community wants to hear. Like, yeah. it's not. I don't know. <sighs> Gary's going to have to listen to the the podcast when it's published to hear all of that stuff that happened all while that he was helpful. away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the other topics that the the since we're you know got eight minutes left the other topics that the the ai has suggested for us is the future of transportation how it may change the way we live the importance of mental health and how to maintain it in a fast-paced world which we definitely don't have time for <laughs> Wait, well I, have, I just have one solution to that is don't live in a fast-paced world <laughs> yeah, slow the world down, slow it down mental health will improve slow and thoughtful and intentional living and it's not quite as bad <laughs>
says that's, the highly sensitive person. <laughs> that's that's super fair. Uh, and the final suggestion by the robot is the latest trends in entertainment and pop culture. I don't even know what that means. I'm not sure what the latest trends are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. Dabbing is a thing. <laughs> like. <laughs> um fortnite is cool right right yeah like there's some dances in fortnite there's a new zelda coming out soon is there uh, yeah because we've been replaying breath of the wild and okay yeah. <laughs> um and when i say soon i mean like probably like eight months from right now. yeah not like very soon <laughs> um I mean, we started watching, okay, so uh, we started watching Legends of Vox, Vox Machina, which just uh, came out yesterday uh, on Amazon Prime, uh, which is the animated series based on the Critical Role's first campaign, um, and uh, that's cool. Uh, it's, it's neat. Um, but also, Aaron and I started watching um, Kaleidoscope. Mm, I enjoyed week. that. Yeah. Did you watch it good. in the order that uh, we did? Because I'm lazy, yeah. and it was easy for like me to start it and Netflix to be like, "Do you want to watch the next episode?" And me to be like, "I don't have to interact." So, yep. Yeah. yeah. So I was told Just that you can watch it. In, I was told that you could watch it in any order, uh, with the possible exception that White should be last. So I started basically with the shortest episode because I wanted to like oh. see if we would like it. Mm -hmm. um and then from it's... there have like bounced around uh different places and I'm kind of like sort of going by like like we did the shortest one i think was red mm -hmm. and then we jumped to yellow and then i was like okay well in between red and yellow is orange so we did that <laughs> um <laughs> and now i'm like okay no it was like it's only eight episodes right yeah yeah i don't so, know I, we've definitely watched those three i don't know i can't remember now what the order was the somebody who's talking about this like wrote down the order that they watched them in which is more than i'm willing to that do sounds, yeah that sounds like a lot of work i probably could figure Starting it out if i just looked at my netflix down. history i mean that's it's not fine. that hard <laughs> um but then it's, we watched we watched blue last night with the thought that like blue plus yellow is green so green would be the next one <laughs> Ooh. yeah it's compelling and 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 whatnot enough to be like okay and i mean if it were more than like if it was like you know a season of episodes probably like you know 16 or something i probably after the first one i would have been like yeah but i'm eight, i eight i remain enough. i remain unconvinced that the particular method of storytelling uh in in that it's like a bunch of discrete stories that jump around in time and and like can be pieced together yeah. in any order um i remain to be convinced that that is the best best way of telling this particular story um and i feel like i feel like this story or a story can be told better uh mm -hmm. in a particular way even if you're jumping around back and forth in time it it's more referential if you do it intentionally you know if, if there is somebody who is not just any person watching the series like making the decisions about this is the way that you should watch this thing um so i'm 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 unconvinced that that allowing that that flexibility is is the best way of of telling the story um i i feel like there are a few episodes that could have just been a minute entirely yeah yeah by the it end. definitely feels like there's some filler in some part like it feels like there's some it felt there are occasions where it felt like this stuff that's happening right now is just like wouldn't doesn't necessarily need to be here like it, it could be not there it could just not i feel and, like that about a lot of entertainment though <laughs> yeah that's fair <laughs> where i'm like this could have been edited yeah. quite a bit more we didn't need a two hour and 40 minute movie I mean, oh, I yeah, suggest that's, in this case, this would too. actually be better as a two hour and 40 minute movie rather than yes. eight yeah. hours, I feel. Yeah. But um, I don't I, know how it would have competed in the box office. It's just, it's not that compelling. Yeah. It doesn't I, need I, to exist, I guess, is where I'm coming down on it. <laughs> I agree that that it could, it would probably work better as a, as a movie than a series. Yeah. 
Um, I, I also think that, that Netflix in particular, partially because they don't have like the broadcast restrictions on length of time. Like, so they're a lot more variable in how long their episodes are. Mm -hmm. Um, like sometimes it's, it's nice because it means that they can tell, you know, a complete story. But like, I also like Netflix suffers more than like TV in the department of including stuff that probably could have been edited out because um, they don't need to cut stuff for time. Um, I was going to say that, um, like, I, they all felt like the same length anyway. I don't know what the variance was between the shortest and longest, but. The shortest was like 39 minutes, and I think the longest is like an hour. Okay. So yeah. it's not a huge variance, but there is some. I'll just stick with X Files. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's reminded me of of um like other heist shows that yeah. are better. <laughs> um, wow, you in, guys! I don't have Amazon Prime, but you're not selling it to me. <laughs> well, Kaleidoscope's on show, on on Netflix, but okay. Um. Yeah, so there was a show uh, like 10 or more years ago called uh, The Hustle, which is a BBC series about con artists. Um, and that had, there's like, I think eight or nine seasons. Um, but this reminded me of that because like, it's, it's another sort of heist kind of thing. Um, and the premise of The Hustle is it's like a team of cons and they, um, they, do long cons in a sort of like Robin Hoody way, although they don't really give. I mean, so there's an American show called Leverage, where it was definitely the Robin Hood thing, where they were con artists that stole from the rich and le and legitimately like re like distributed that those funds to people who needed them, or like to whoever their client was or whatever. Um, but uh, there was, but the heist was like, well, we'll steal from the rich, and then end of statement. Um, so they were they were specific about who their marks were, um, but it was really well done and it was self referential in that it um, like explained like the various roles and rules of the con was a was a running theme. So like it gave this uh, like this sense of like you know, and now young Padawan, we're going to teach you this lesson of how to be a con artist. Um, and it was uh, so the first couple seasons were were particularly good, and then it kind of like. You know, BBC. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.